This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Uh, this is uh, by far our biggest one, uh, which is really awesome. Uh, my name is Kurt. I'm John. And we are the organizers of the Boston WordPress Meetup. Uh, for those of you who don't have the information already, the Wi-Fi code is WP1126 on the Cambridge network. You can visit us at our website, bostonwp.org, uh, at bostonwp on Twitter, and hashtag bostonwp. Um, so first, we want to give a thanks to Microsoft Nerd for uh, providing us the venue since April of 2009. Um, AV Wi-Fi help. Um, they gave us pizza at one point, uh, but there's still drinks out there. So a big thank you to them. Uh, and also a special thanks to HostGator for um, we host the Boston WordPress site up on there. But basically, it's a pretty affordable hosting. They have one-click install, uh, pretty good support. So we like to recommend them for shared hosting if you guys are looking for hosting with WordPress. Fifty percent off sale today. A fifty percent off sales today. Wow. And then other days, twenty-five percent off with Boston WP Meetup. We should take advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, pizza sponsors. Well, it could be you, but this month is us. Um, so we're actively looking for sponsors. If you are willing to help out, um, pitch in. We normally have a donation button on our website, but I deleted our website. Um, to, you know, for 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 good reason. It's to to get us moving, and 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 we'll uh, we'll talk more about this in in a couple of what slides. What if you do pitch in? Um, on the meetup page when we announce the speakers, we'll have your logo and a little bit about your company right there for the entire month. And then we mention you right now. Um, but none of you did anything, so. <laughs> and if you have any job openings, too, you can mention it. And that's a good time to, to pitch, your, pitch your company. Uh, one thing to take note of, the Manchester, New Hampshire WordPress Development Group. Um, it is going to expire in seven days, and they need your help. Um, John, who's, Jonathan May, who's sitting up front. JWMA at yourpresenceontheweb.com. If you are interested in helping out or um, trying to get this back up and going again, uh, please see him, uh, talk to him, send him an email. Um, it does expire in seven days, so if not, then it goes into the ether, the, the meetup.com ether. So we had a website. It was called bostonwp.org. Uh, we will have a website again. Uh, we're aiming for January 1st, so new year, new site. Um, there you'll be able to find the meeting minutes, uh, info, and videos from previous meetups. Uh, we did and will still have a job board. Um, and we will have forums that work and are responsive, so you can use some mobile. -y. And uh, we have a GitHub account that we're starting to play with uh, where we want to try and get some community projects going. Um, and we have some other announcements around that, too. So the meetup, we are still the second largest meetup in the world with over 1,550 mm -hmm. members. Uh, in the past, we've asked for help. We've asked people, you know, if you want to become an organizer, come see us, come shoot us an email. So we'd like to announce our newest organizers tonight. Um, the first two are Tom and Reiko Beach. Tom and Reiko have been supporting us by filming our meetup event, uh, wow, for a long time. Um, they've pretty much been behind the scenes the entire time. So now we're bringing them to the front, and they're going to be organizers now. But they're in the back. They're in the, but they're in the back. <laughs> we're also bringing on Eric Hitter, where, who is right here. He's our local automatician. Okay, Adam White. And finally, our speaker of the night, Jesse. So these slides will be up somewhere in our Boston <laughs> WP.org ether as well. Um, but for now, I'll, I'll put them on SlideShare. I'll, I'll put a link on, on the Meetup page uh, for tonight's event so you guys can have their email addresses and, and ours as well. Um, finally, stay tuned for notices on additional development, 
design meetups, uh, we're looking to expand. Uh, beginners workshops, uh, WordPress Hack Day, um, WordCamp Boston 2013, uh, we're starting to plan already, and other local WordPress events. So if you guys have ideas for things that you'd like to see us do, now we have kind of the help to try and do that kind of stuff. So uh, let us know, and if you still want to come and help, feel free to come up, with that, come up to us and talk to us and we'll figure something out. We never have enough help. So do you guys have any questions? Not yet. Not yet. They're, they're still right. good for now. They haven't voted us out no. yet. No. <laughs> what happened to the website? Oh, I deleted it because it would force us to create a new one. Um, so there's nothing like motivation than deleting your own website. Um, Yes, all, all the videos are still online, um, and I'll, I'll put a link up on meetup.com to reference that. And meetup.com still works for a lot of the basic communication, so if you guys want to leave messages or try to get a hold of us or recommend meetup, uh, just go to the meetup.com site and you can make your recommendations there. And bostonwp.org redirects to the meetup site links right now. So. What's the hostgator discount code, do you remember? Uh, Boston WP Meetup. Boston WP Media. Mm -hmm. Yep. So how much is it to sponsor? To sponsor food for a month, it's three hundred dollars. So we're not asking for much. Well. When's the next meeting? Next meeting, we normally don't do a January meeting. Uh, uh not January meeting. December. Wow. December meeting. Uh, because of the holidays, um, we will kick back up in January, and we should already have speakers lined up. Do you know which day? Or? It's usually the last Monday of every month. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We try to keep people updated through that. Okay. Great. All right. So tonight's talk, Jesse Friedman, at Professor on Twitter, WordPress as a career. Cool. Thanks. Yay. <laughs> okay. So this is a little bit different than the normal meetups we do. Uh, I'm not going to put as much emphasis on the talk tonight as much as I want to put on as the networking and the charity that we have tied to the event tonight. Can you hear me? Sort of. How do I turn up the mic here? LED is all the way up. All right, so I just got to speak louder, huh? Is that better? Yeah, but then I gotta lean over. All right, I'm just gonna be loud. All right, is that good? Okay, so I wanna take some time right now to thank everybody who had a hand in tonight's event. Again, this is not just a normal meetup for me. This is a little bit of a special night. This is the launch of my book. I wrote a book back in June. I submitted it to the publishers. It was on shelves by August. Uh, so my first thanks goes to New Writers and Peach Pit. They actually were able to turn around the book super fast, which is really great for tech books. I actually contributed to two other books that are on the raffle for tonight, the Web Designers uh, Web Hand, the Designers Web Handbook and the uh, uh, Web Designers uh, Idea Book. And when I published, or I actually worked with the author for those, it took nearly nine months for those to show up on, uh, on shelves. So by the time I had submitted my work, it was over a year old. And that's a little bit hard in our world, right? So everything is already out, to out of date and hurting. But for me, it was literally three months from the time I wrote the last page, made the last edit to the time it was on the shelves. So that was huge for me. Um, I have a few friends in the audience. John Desrosiers, for one, who was the tech edit for my book, and he works from Slocum Studios. He, did a, he took a huge hand in making sure that my code was not garbage. Uh, so I thank you for that. My wife is around here somewhere. She had a huge hand in motivating me. There she is, trying to not. <laughs> yep. Um, all the guys from the WordPress Boston Meetup, who I am now a part of that group, uh, all of them have helped tonight in organizing everything, letting me steal the space for a little bit. Uh, we were able to get the pizzas and the cash bar and all that, so it was fantastic. So part of the reason that we're here tonight, I have a hard time talking about myself for a really long time, uh, believe it or not. I know it sounds like I. I do really well at that, but I don't. Uh, the Alana Zuller Memorial Sports Fund is something that I'm a part of. Um, unfortunately, my niece passed away last summer, and uh, in her honor, we created a sports fund 
that gives scholarships to underprivileged children to help them uh, get involved in sports and stay in school and all that. And it's been going really well. And so far, we've raised ten, seventeen thousand dollars. So tonight, we're trying to add to that, which is what all that charity stuff is, uh, all the raffles for. Uh, so I didn't want to just do it just to have this whole party be about just the book. I wanted to have it be about the, the charity as well. So if you look at the list of things, I put it out on the internet. I said, I need stuff for a raffle. And the stuff that I got back is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, lifetime WP Engine hosting accounts, um, Apple gift cards, uh, online courses. It, the list just goes on and on and on. So what's going to happen tonight is uh, if you haven't bought a raffle ticket yet, I encourage you to do so. All the proceeds go straight to charity. This is the last time I'm really going to bug you guys about this. When we're done talking in here, you're going to have another 15 to 20 minutes to get out there and buy a raffle ticket. Some are $5, some are 10 And it, again, it all goes to charity, and you can win some awesome prizes. At around 8.15 to 8.20, we're going to start announcing winners in here, and you get to see if you actually won something. So please just take some time to do that tonight, and I really appreciate you guys all coming out. So thank you to all of you as well. So what are we here to talk about? WordPress is a career. Um, these days, it's a lot different. When I gave my first talk in this room, I think it was probably two or three years ago, and I was talking about WordPress out of the box. I actually had a little picture of a WordPress logo popping out of a box because it was time to start talking about WordPress as something other than a blogging platform. And I had built a 23,000 page WordPress directory uh, for an automotive uh, like service center site. And it, what it did was it allowed you to type in your zip code, and it uh, found all the auto air, uh, service centers in your area, and it actually posted it in order of distance and all that. And this was something that was really out of the box at the time for, for WordPress. Um, today, it's very different. Today, it's very easy to make a career out of WordPress. You just need to know where to get started. So I started probably about five years ago. And now I'm an author, a speaker. I teach WordPress at Johnson Wales University. I'm a full-time developer. I'm also on Twitter uh, as at professor. You can start. You can hear what I have to say. I guess my rants and my raves and all that. You can learn more about WordPress here at this Facebook post. And we kind of had to jump in right off the bat to like why WordPress, and you know because tonight's a mixed crowd. It's not just WordPress folks. I have some friends who came who like Drupal. I have some friends who came who don't really understand why you would use WordPress over another CMS. So let's talk about that briefly. Uh, right now, WordPress is powering 22 out of every 100 new domains. It's 22% of the new internet. It's huge. It's enormous. If you look at something like WordPress.com, if we jump out of here real quick, and we just take a look at some stats from WordPress.com. 58 million websites are powered by WordPress. It's a huge number. About half of that, a little more than half of that, is on WordPress.com. So 26 million, 27 million websites are powered by you, me, your clients, your customers, your friends, your family. It's a huge, huge uh, growth from where we were a few years ago. Right now, this is an active map of what's going on on WordPress.com around the globe. These numbers, these uh, little dots indicate different things. Posts are white, comments are green, likes are yellow, and you can actually see what's going on in real time around the world. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, 392 million people view more than 3.8 billion pages each month. So you can just start to see the numbers are staggering. They're enormous. We have a huge market share as WordPress folks jump back, we start to get into the fact that WordPress is now powering over 50% of websites using a CMS. So essentially, it's destroying the competition. <laughs> so this is a little robot that I, uh, I have. My parents actually got it for me for Christmas one year. It's a little USB drive that we mess around with at my office. I actually have a WordPress blog <coughs> for him on WordPress.com. We take little interesting photos of him around the office. Now this is kind of speaks to what WordPress is about right now. It can go from anything like a really crazy blog of photos like this, all the way up to, um, oh, I've got to jump back here. I didn't mean to do that. Things like time.com, UPS has a WordPress website. 
uh, you know, Mashable, Smashing Magazine, um, NBC Sports, uh, CBS, Local News is all powered by WordPress. It can go from one end of the spectrum completely to the other. So in all seriousness, seriousness uh, WordPress has a lower barrier of entry. This is one reason why you might want to use WordPress. Ten times is not an accurate number. I just kind of made that up. But it sounds about right. Uh, there's ten times more educational resources and events out there than Drupal and other things out there. Uh, again, not sure if that's accurate, but sounds like a good number, good round number. Um, extremely easy to get started messing around with. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing because we all know how easy it is for someone to break something in WordPress. Uh, they can go in there and just comment out one little line of PHP and all of a sudden the whole site is a big white screen, right? We've seen that. But at the same time, things like Bluehost, companies like Bluehost giving you the one-click installs, make it easy for people to get started, right? So small businesses who are just getting started, they have a few hundred dollars. I know you guys all love it when you get that phone call, right? I really need a website. My restaurant's taken off. We're ready to go. I need a website tomorrow. You're, okay, what's your budget? $350. Uh, all right. You hang up the phone, you wait for them to call back, and you try to have a polite conversation with them. Instead of just forcing them to just tell them that they're lost, you can actually push them to get started with a WordPress account, right? We've all said that. Get on WordPress.com, build your website, have fun with it. When you start to see the need for a bigger website to have the budget for it, then you actually transfer the files over, you get started on your own thing. Um, nearly 20,000, this is actually a little inaccurate now, it's more like 22,000 plugins. And um, and this is actually backwards, sorry. There's more plugins than there are themes, uh, at least in the repository anyway. But there's close to, I think, 1,700 themes on the repository, and then there's thousands of them all over the internet, uh, whether you're paying for them or they're free. Uh, there's really no limit to how many sites you can host or what you can accomplish. I've yet to see something I couldn't do in WordPress. That doesn't mean that it's always the best solution. Um, for example, there's a lot of e-commerce stuff I still wouldn't do with WordPress just because it just it just doesn't make a lot of sense to do it that way. But it doesn't mean I couldn't physically do it. Um, and a side note to my Drupal friends up here in the front row, I do love Drupal. And one thing I like to note about anybody who's ever saying anything bad about another CMS, whether it be WordPress or Drupal, and I'm sure we've all been in this conversation before, where someone says something negative about WordPress and all of a sudden you, your blood starts to boil a little bit, you want to knock the guy in the face, don't do it. <laughs> The only reason anybody's ever saying anything bad about another competing CMS that's really of value, like Drupal or WordPress or any of the other big ones out there, is because, frankly, they just never used it enough to actually get used to it. So you shouldn't fall into the same trap there either. Uh, Drupal has so many powerful tools, and it's a really great CMS. I just personally chose WordPress because it fell into my lap one year, and I started using it, and I never turned back. And I think it's fair to say that it's the same way for other people as well. So. Think about your investment of time, money, and resources. Now, this is the talk that I give to people who are kind of getting into the WordPress field for the first time. And uh, a lot of you have probably worked with WordPress a lot. But if you're continuing down this road, if you're going to start investing in educational tools and looking at online courses, if you're going to be buying books, I hear there's a really great one out there on a the table out there, um, you need to know that you're investing in something that's going to be there for a long time. WordPress is going to be there for a long time. The amount of market share we have alone it speaks to that. So what does all this mean? It means there's more work out there. 56 million websites, a lot of those need to be put onto bigger platforms, need custom development, need plugins, need custom themes. Uh, more consulting gigs. People underestimate the amount of consulting work there is out there. Even if you're not a hardcore developer, even if you've never developed a plugin, it doesn't mean you can't answer questions for businesses. Help them get started. Help them to understand what themes they can download, what hosting plans they need, what they can do with their budget. These are all things that you can provide as a service. There are more themes to download. This also means that there's more themes to be downloaded by your customers. <coughs> the same goes for plugins, which also means a lot more exposure. And it's a better use of your skills. You're not using an antiquated CMS. You're not using something that's not going to be around in a while. You're making sure that you're getting a return on your investment. So WordPress in the wild. I want to show some examples of WordPress that is out there, in case you guys haven't seen these before. Uh, as we said, WordPress powers nearly 60 million websites, and they're not all blogs. And I like to make sure that that is a point, because I know a lot of people out there who know that try to stick it to me that WordPress is still a uh, you know, blogging platform, and it's kind of like a running joke 
uh, WordPress is an amazing blogging platform. It will always be an amazing blogging platform. But it's also so much more than that now. People may argue this, as I say, but the truth is WordPress is now a full-fledged CMS. And how do you stand your ground when you're cornered by someone? Maybe you're in a client meeting and your client's telling you that your WordPress site, WordPress isn't secure. WordPress can't do the stuff that you want it to do. How do you overcome that? How do you give a, uh, you know, a convincing argument to, buy, to get that client to buy into what you're selling? And we can show facts and you can show examples. And I find that showing examples is the fastest way to sell a client. Look at WordPress VIP. WordPress VIP is Automatic's version of a premium hosting plan and development, uh, I guess, consultation kind of like thing. I mean, Eric can answer a little bit more about that, I'm sure. Uh, the guys at Slocum can too, probably. But you look at time.com. Time is on WordPress VIP. How many millions of sites or visitors do they get? CNN Live, same thing, WordPress VIP. This is powered by WordPress. This has to be secure. It has to be reliable. It has to be scalable and work for millions and millions of visitors. Not to, not to mention the amount of writers that they have on staff who need to know how to use the, the application, how to use the dashboard, how to write and generate content. Okay, so it's not always just about the readers and the visitors of the site, it's about the user admins. Is your application going to work for the people managing that site? As I said, CBS, for example, local news. We get into things like Mashable. Who's here have read a, an article off of Mashable? If you're a social media or a marketer, you better have read something off of Mashable. Uh, Smashing Magazine, I bet 90% of you have read something on Mash, uh, Smashing Magazine, right? Again, hundreds of thousands of visitors every month, mobile and desktop across the board. TechCrunch, some of the guys in the back have worked on TechCrunch. Uh, Web Designer Depot, I'm sure some of you have seen this site. This is when we start getting into things a little bit more creative. We're talking a little bit less traffic now, but more creativity, more out of the box stuff. Has anybody ever seen this site before? This is a really beautifully well done studio website, all powered by WordPress. Creative Spaces, this is another one that's really out of the box, a little strange, but really cool. Cloud 365 is an awesome project, also powered by WordPress. And then this one, JFF Design. Guarantee you nobody's ever heard of this website. It's actually built on Flash and powered by WordPress. I am not condoning that. <laughs> <laughs> but it just goes to show you the complexity and the things that you can do with WordPress. For whatever reason, at the time that this was being built, years ago, it needed to be powered by a CMS but actually be a Flash website. I'm not going to ask why, that's not my place, okay? But the point is, is that they were able to take database-driven content through WordPress, powered by a user admin, maintained by a user admin, generate it into XML, and put it through a Flash website. Again, not condoning it, but it's just showing you examples of what you can do out there. So make sure you stand your ground, beat down those guys. Come on, that's a great one. <laughs> Now that I got you to drink all the Kool-Aid, does everybody have their Nike shoes on? Because we're going somewhere. All right. As I mentioned, WordPress is a full-fledged CMS. It is fast, secure, and highly reliable. Every time I hear that WordPress is not secure, I want to pull out my own hair. You know, I, you know, I don't like my hair. I want to pull it out, though, because it's like, it is secure. It's extremely secure. It just, you need to make sure that you make sure it's secure. I mean, your laptop is only as secure as your password is only secure is where you leave it. If you leave it in the back of your car in the mall unlocked, it's not secure, right? It's the same kind of situation. It's supported from thousands of developers around the world. Anytime you look at a proprietary CMS, it's great. You have a phone call, or a phone number to call, right? It's two o'clock in the morning, your site went down, your CMS isn't working. What happened? You guys pushed an update last night. Well, I can call you guys at two in the morning, right? But one of like 15 guys are gonna answer. And that's their entire support team, probably, right? You're not, you don't have thousands. Of course, there isn't a phone number to call with basic WordPress solutions. But what do you have? You have the support forums. You have the mailing lists. You have um, just Twitter. I can't tell you how much support I get from Twitter. And it's been proven to work, as we showed with the examples. 
There's plenty of educational resources and valuable information out there. Yeah? You said that WordPress isn't just a blogging platform. It's a full-fledged CMS. Yep. If you're pitching this to a client, how would you distinguish between a blogging platform and a CMS? Well, a CMS, by definition, is a content management system, right? So technically, it was always a content management system. Uh, the only thing is, is that as a blogging platform, it was really geared towards bloggers for writers, for scheduling posts and doing cool things with blogs. But the things that you get into with the complexity of uh, dynamic menus or custom post types or taxonomy, things like that, that's when you start to get into what we would consider a full-fledged CMS. And two years ago, three years ago, I probably wouldn't say that about WordPress. I would say it was on its way and it was doing a good job of it. But now we're able to do some really complex stuff. And when you have a site that's really dynamic, take for example a university website where you have basically different tunnels that you can take down and have different sites for different areas. So the faculty could have its own site, athletics could have its own site, but it's all powered by one system. That's when you really get into the complexity of the back end. What's happening back there? Do you have content, uh, custom post types? Do you have dynamic menus? Who's powering it? How, you know, how many people do you have managing it? That kind of thing. Have you seen any benchmarks published that would help us to uh, um, support this notion with our clients to say that, you know, you know here's some examples of where people have built similar type uh, websites and they've run it on the different platforms and here are the, you know, spark results, whatever. Like I haven't, and if anybody has, the question was, have you seen any benchmarks or, or like, um, resources that actually show you how to provide examples for specific elements. I haven't, but what I tend to do is, uh, and it, I don't have a huge following on Twitter, I have like 2,000 people, but I can throw out a tweet real quick and ask some people, CC people like Nason or, um, uh, you know, uh, who else is out there? Eric, for example. I mean, there's hundreds of Twitter uh, WordPress folks, and you can just ask them for examples, and that's what you, we usually go by. Uh, it's usually quick to find those. But that would be a great directory website. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Yeah. What's a good example of a video website or a video site? site YouTube? Cameo or oh, you mean one powered by WordPress? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Does anybody have a good WordPress powered video website? WordPress TV. Oh, there you go. That's actually a great example. WordPress TV is all uh, WordPress educational yeah, stuff, conferences, things like that. What? Is it one off like shorts or is it like a. Episode? It's everything from WordPress conference talks to oh. just people sitting on their couch teaching you how to do something. WordPress TV. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, yeah. Um, I think it's Search Engine Watch has the stats on what different, um, what like different CMSs are powering some percentages of different websites and might be able to use that as a way to, to dig into not only just the stats on how many of the top million traffic websites are in WordPress, which is like 10%, um, which is huge, it's bigger than any other CMS, um, but also you might be able to get into, you know, what percentage of .edu sites are served that way and that, that kind of thing. So you might be able to find helpful stuff there. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. All right, so client And that's from a Drupal guy, by the way. Yeah, he, he, every time I refer to the Drupal guy, this is the Drupal guy right here. All right, so uh, client-based web projects. There's obviously a lot of money to be made there. Again, we talked a little bit about how to pitch them. Your expertise is really what's going to back this. So you might be able to sell the client, but if you can't perform and do the work, you're going to fail. So you need to make sure that you either have the skill sets yourself or utilize the skills of people around you. A meetup like this is the perfect way to find a great designer, a great developer, and match those skills and manage the project. So if you're more of a project manager, there's probably 50 WordPress developers in this room right now, and maybe half of that are designers and writers. So you could easily find the people that you need to make that project work for you. I personally have partnered with designers and other developers in you know, my close network, and I only work through them now. Because I know that they know how I work, and I know that their skill levels are there, and their expertise are there. And so you create this great partnership. You don't have to employ them. You don't have to do contract, uh, you know, long-term contracts. You can just do project by project and just know that the work is going to come. Um, and, you know, honestly, at this point, I'm starting to see that people understand WordPress better. And it might actually be easier to sell it. Uh, 
knowing that it's coming by WordPress, or you may actually be asked to build it because they need a WordPress solution. Um, now, I give this talk a lot to people who are just getting into the field, and a lot of times they're designers, web designers just getting started. You don't have to be a developer to work in WordPress. Like I said before, you can partner with a developer. I have a friend in New York, her name's Jenny Schwartz. Um, she is a phenomenal designer, and I think she's maybe coded one website in her life, and it was with like front page. And that's okay. She, knew, she knows what she's doing. She's an amazing designer. She coaches the clients through every aspect of it. She can talk the talk, and she has me do the walking for her. Um, so you don't need to know uh, to, to partner with a developer. Um, your skill sets may be a certain level. You may know how to do theming, but you don't know how to do plugin development. That's okay. Like I said, there are a lot of developers in here that can do that for you. You can outsource to them. You can work on things with them. Maybe you have a really phenomenal idea for a plugin that you can start putting out there, giving away for free, work for it, but you don't have the ability to actually get the work done yourself. Partner with someone. Share the profits on that. Get started on it. That's really the best thing you can do. Uh, submitting to a repository. Now, you can go to things like ThemeForest and uh, I think even WooCommerce you can submit stuff to. Um, there's a lot of ones, there's a lot out there. But I always say that the WordPress Extend repository is the best place. You're not going to make direct funds off of it, but you are going to make direct reputation points and you're going to get noticed a lot more. Uh, WordPress.org and ThemeForest. And in writing, speaking, and consulting, I'm standing here doing two out of three of those right now. I wrote the book that we're talking about and I'm speaking. Uh, again, the, the writing of the book does not pay that much. It's not, I'm not putting my kids through college with that and that's totally fine. But I guarantee you, I can promise you that it helped me get my, my latest job at the new company that I'm at. It's helped me get a lot more speaking gigs, a lot more notoriety in the field. And you know what, honestly, I'm not gonna say that I'm better than half the people in this room at WordPress. I was able to just put some ideas together, put them on paper in a really intelligent way. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, and I got it done, you know what I mean? So like, you guys can do the same thing. And it doesn't have to be a book, it can be a blog, it can be posting on uh, other sites. I get paid by .NET Magazine to write for them, uh, for other blogging sites. I mean, there's money to be made out there from writing. And the writing, I feel like it has such a high return on your investment that it's really important to do it. Um, so we talked about how to get noticed out there, how to get noticed so that you can get those jobs, how you get noticed so you can get the work, the full-time careers. <laughs> WordPress forums are fantastic. You can go out there, you can ask questions, but you can also answer them. Um, mailing lists. Has anybody ever subscribed to the mailing lists? One or two people? I love the mailing lists. I think they're awesome. The, my favorite one is the WordPress hackers mailing list. Basically, it's like, I want to do something completely out of the box, complex, Nobody's ever heard of this before. How do I do it? And everybody on that mailing list gets that email. So if you're on that mailing list, you've gotten emails from me before, and you've seen answers from me before. It's a great place to have like a very tight niche group of high-end developers in one little spot. Uh, WordPress meetup groups. You're sitting in one. Speaking at events like this will really help. This is actually where I started. Three years ago, one of my first talks I ever gave was standing right here at this podium. And just in three years, I'm, I mean, I've written a book, I'm speaking at South by Southwest next year, and I'm not saying this stuff to, to gloat, I'm saying it because it's just as easily to be you next. It's, it's not that hard to get started with all this stuff. Uh, WordCamp. There's one here in Boston, there's one down in Providence uh, now. I think that there's, uh, there's one in New York, there's, they're all over the place. There's probably, I think, maybe 50 in the country, 40 in the country, something like that. Hundreds of them around the world. My goal is to speak at uh, WordCamp uh, Japan next year. That would be really cool. Uh, so we get into the WordPress Extend. Um, you take a look at themes. You give it away for free. Right now there are 1,633 WordPress themes out there that have been downloaded 59 million times. Look at the ratio of that. You write one good WordPress theme, you get it out there. It's very likely to be downloaded 50,000 times, 100,000 times, maybe a million times. Your name is on that WordPress theme. People are gonna remember that. I'm not saying 100% of the people will. 10, 5%, it's, it's still a lot of people. 
22,000 plugins, 375 million downloads. Again, look at the ratio of that. I should have put the ratios up there. I should have made that a little bit more apparent. And I'm not going to try to do the math in my head after a couple beers. But you guys, can, you guys can do it. You guys have iPhones and stuff like that. Um, you can get an idea of how many times an average plugin is downloaded. How many times that ends up in a WordPress site? How many times that powers somebody's site? I wrote a WordPress plugin on the fly after WordCamp Boston in July, and it's had close to 1,000 downloads since then. And I didn't do anything to promote it. I just threw it up there. I haven't even made a single update to it. Actually, I'm kind of flaking on it. But in just a few months, it's 1,000 downloads. People have had my plugin in their sites powering something that they're doing. So free themes and plugins, it may sound crazy, but it helped you get that recognition. It helped you build that reputation. Clients will need support eventually. Um, you can provide premium support to people. That's totally fine. And clients will need customization. If you write a really cool event management plugin, and it's really solving a lot of problems for a lot of people, maybe 10% of those people need something custom for that plugin. You can just fork it and do something cool with it. Charge them for it. Eventually, you can start selling themes and plugins on those other repositories we talked about, on your own sites. Um, you can get a full-time job. This is what I did. This is what a lot of people do now. There's a lot of full-time jobs out there. Uh, more and more companies are hiring designers and developers who know WordPress. Get your name out there. We have the, dis the, uh, the job board that will be coming back up. I know Steven from uh, Oomph, you guys are always looking for someone, right? Yeah, I mean, these guys do awesome WordPress work for VIP, too, and uh, they're always hiring. So it's definitely someone to look forward, something to look forward to. And with that, I'm going to rem remind you guys of who I am, in case you forgot, in the last 30 minutes. Uh, this is the book. I hope you guys buy it, because it's really awesome. And you can catch me on Twitter. And that's it. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? No? Yes? You mentioned using the, the forums more frequently, and the more plugins and themes that I use for WordPress sites, uh, I keep running into the same limitation that maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, is anybody else challenged with searching within a subcategory within the forums about a specific plugin? Quite often you go to a support forum, uh, there's a link where you're searching all the forums. When you get into the form for that specific right. plugin, you do a search, you're actually searching the entire directory, right? Yeah, um, I hope, I know that they're making advancements in the plugin uh, UI uh, th this coming year. I think we're gonna get profiles and I think we're gonna get a lot, of, a lot more cool stuff. Hopefully that gets fixed. You have something to add to that? Yeah, but if there are thousands of topics, how do you how do you filter through them? Yeah, yeah, you can kind of like Google hack it a little bit. Yeah, yep, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I submitted it, uh, I think, John, it was it June 8th? The book was done. John had the last bit of it. John was my tech editor. He had the last bit of it. I think we submitted it while we were at WordCamp New York City, which was like June 8th, and it was on shelves August 20th. So what about the No, I got really lucky. I spoke at Future of Web Design New York City in 2011, and I gave a talk on uh, WordPress responsive theming. And uh, the first person to come up to me after my talk was the Vice President of Acquisitions at New Writers. And he just said straight out, hi, it's nice to meet you. Do you want to write me a book? I was blown away. I said, absolutely. He said, it doesn't pay a lot. I said, I don't care. And, uh, and that's, you know, that was an... September, no, it was October of 2011, I had to then um, write a single chapter of the book, which he submitted to the board, which is not an official board, but it's like a group of people who are approve or disapprove it. They said they loved it, they all threw their hands up, and I had a contract in my hands 
by December 15th, and I was supposed to have the first half of the book done by like April. I didn't even start it till April. Um, I wrote the entire book in April, May, and the first week of June, and it was on the shelves by August. Um, it was my life first. That's why I thank my wife, because we have a five-year-old, and um, that wasn't easy. Uh, and she did a lot for the family, so I have to thank her for that. Did you ever consider self-publishing? I have, um, and it was something I was thinking about doing before it all just kind of fell in my lap. I looked at sites, I think it's like Lulu, um, that basically publishes the book for you and it's print Create on demand. Right. What's that? Create space. Yep. Absolutely. Especially the large following. Yeah. Yep. What's the name of your publishing company? Uh, Merrimack Media. Merrimack Media, if anybody's interested. Uh, you said you teach at Johnson & Wales? Yes. Right? Yep. Uh, what's the, what do you teach there? Uh, I started teaching Flash in 2006. And since then, I run the gamut of about 10 to 12 different courses throughout the year based off of what they need. Uh, so I'm an adjunct. I'm not a full-time professor. I just teach when I need to teach, when they ask me to. Uh, and it goes from basic web design, like HTML, CSS, to advanced, which is a little bit of JavaScript. I teach a project commerce course where you do PHP and you actually build a shopping cart. It, it just runs the gamut. I just finished a jQuery course. I'm going to run it again next uh, this winter. Um, so none of them specifically on WordPress? There is one CMS course that's going to run in the spring, which is all uh, WordPress. Yeah, because I, I teach a... Uh, a course myself. Mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to crack the. Uh, Where? I, I'm just teaching at a couple of uh, oh, okay. adult ed places. Up I'll tell you, area. it's been a long time in the running to get the CMS course going, and this is like a trial phase. I've taught WordPress in other courses, just forcing it in there, like the e-commerce course. We did. We built WordPress shopping carts, just because I felt like it was important for the students to walk out with some kind of CMS knowledge. And again, I'm not going to push. I know you guys something to say. I'm not going to push Drupal or WordPress or Expression Engine over one or the other. I just happen to know WordPress, so that's what I teach. But if we had a teacher like Jason to come in and he could teach Drupal, I would, I'd be so thrilled. I, I mean, I, it's something that every educational center has to have. You need to be teaching CMSs now. Um, continuing ed programs are, are the place to look. They're, they have the most flexibility in what kinds of courses they'll take on. Um, so you know, we have we're fortunate in Providence to have. Johnson & Wales, RISD, Brown, Rhode Island College, URI. So there's a lot of different programs to try and sort of shop a course around. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the Boston area, I mean, you can't trip without falling into a school. So I mean, that's that's probably an easier avenue to go to, to try and get a course into a, a college setting. Yes? This may be a subject for another book, but can you tell us a little bit, people who don't know, what's the rivalry between Google and WordPress people? Like? You know, if you went into the core WordPress people and the core Drupal people, I don't think you'd see a rivalry. I think you'd see a competitive, a competition of uh, like genuine, um, just they want to make the internet better. Both of them, both sides, and they work off of each other. Uh, there was a great article written by a Drupal core developer, I think two years ago, saying this is exactly what WordPress is doing now that we're failing at, and this is where we need to succeed. And it wasn't a WordPress sucks kind of article. It was WordPress is awesome at these things, and we need to improve ourselves. And I feel like we do the same thing. I mean, the only reason I would ever learn, really commit myself to learning Drupal would be to just understand what it is that I could be doing better with WordPress. I mean, it's just two different paths. And I think if you were to look at the very core, like when they were first built, WordPress was built for a blogging platform for very, ease, uh, very simple ease of use. Uh, people were able to get started with it extremely quickly. I think Drupal was kind of the other side of it, more of a computer science look and feel from the very beginning, and it had a little bit harder um, a barrier entry to get involved in for novices, but the experts were able to flow through it and build things a lot quicker. So, you know, and that's kind of the routes that they've taken now. They're in very different places now, but that's where they started. Um, and Jason and I are good friends. We get along very well, so I don't think we have a rivalry. No. <laughs> No, and I mean, you see some of the things like flexible post types that came into WordPress is something that was influenced by Drupal. And there's been 
a lot of, I would say, fairly liberal borrowing in the admin interface in, in recent builds of Drupal based on Joomla and WordPress. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be learned on all sides. I think the only time people get into fisticuffs is either for, you know, good TV or if they really haven't spent that much time really learning it yet. Yeah, I think, and I said that earlier, I think the, the majority of the people who kind of argue and get into debates and, and anger, angrily fight one way or the other are people who have not used one or had enough experience with it. Again, I didn't use Drupal enough, but like I have friends in the industry, I see what it can do, I've seen what it's done in the inter industry, and I know enough about it to know that it's a powerful, well-rounded CMS, so there's no reason to, to downgrade it. And frankly, if Drupal p packed things up tomorrow and walked away, WordPress would be worse for it. I mean, it's that constant competition that helps each other get better. You, you have a follow-up? Sure. WordPress is not the most accessible program for blind users. Yep. Especially under Internet Explorer. Okay. Who do I complain to about that to get something done? Uh, yeah, where's Eric? There's an accessibility subgroup. Is there an accessibility yeah. group? Okay. Who do you know who's running that one? Uh, Jane would know, I guess. Do you, uh, are you on Twitter? Yeah. Uh, go. For short. Yeah. Tweet at Jane for short. She's not necessarily in charge of it, but she can point you in the right direction. She'll answer that question for you. She question in the back? Yeah. Change your password from whatever it is to something extremely <laughs> hard. And then dump the admin account and make that something really hard. Um, once you've secured WordPress, you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, just try messing around with it, get some themes that you really like and, and enjoy, and just start to understand how you can modify those files to change things. Are you, I mean, have you done theme development at all? I've just made my first website. Uh, great, congratulations, that's awesome. Um, so what I would say is just grab a theme that you really like and start hacking into it. Do you have HTML and CSS experience? Yes. Okay, great, you're, I mean, you're on your way. You, you could buy like a really great book um, but there's also online courses that can help you too if you're really interested. But you know the WordPress.org extend uh, documentation area. They actually have like a tutorial section on getting started. Um, if you just go to WordPress.org and type, I think if you just type in getting started, it'll actually show you the the basics of understanding a WordPress theme. I would say the first thing to tackle to understand is the template hierarchy. Once you understand that, you'll you'll be off and running. So, if, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. I mean, if you're selling something, if you're selling experience or, or support, or you're selling a plugin or a theme, there's ways to make money that way. If you're looking at actually being a content writer, is that kind of where you're going with this? Like, you're actually a writer? Okay, so there's SCM. So Google provides a very easy way for you to make money off of uh, Google Ads on your website. You can insert those, and there's probably 100 plugins for inserting Google AdWords ads into your WordPress you know, sidebar, whatever it may be. I find that I actually have a lot more um, money being made from affiliate links. If you notice at the bottom of my URL, or things, my slide, I have like a 30% discount coupon for Bluehost. You know, I could maybe, let's say I generate a thousand clicks on AdWords over a period of month. If I sell, if I get Bluehost to sell two accounts to you, I'll make 120 bucks. It's probably close to you know ten cents a click on an AdWords campaign, and if you center everything towards something that you really truly believe in, there's two hosting accounts that I'll always promote. It'll be and I I know that we get support from Hostgator. I've never actually used Hostgator, but Bluehost is awesome because of the one-click install and their support that they give. But when you're ready for a grown-up account, you're ready for something bigger. WP Engine's the way to go, and I'll promote that all day, every day. Those guys are the best, and if I can put that on my website and promote that, I mean. WordPress engine, I think they pay $120 uh, an affiliate link. So, I mean, those are the types of things, you know, you start selling hundreds of thousands of those a month, you can make you know, some serious money. So it's very hard. Yeah, it's a big range. If I told you what my hourly rates were, you would uh, shoot me or yourself. Um, <laughs> The reason for that is because I, had, I, I don't do freelance anymore, but when I did, I had a full-time job at the time, and it was between me playing with my son on a Saturday afternoon or doing freelance work. 
And if it had to be freelance work, it had to be worth it. So it was a lot of money. And I took on a lot less clientele, but I had a lot more quality work. Uh, what I tend to see in the market is somewhere between $100 and $150 an hour. Um, you guys can shout out whether or not you think that's accurate or not. I think that's about right. Yeah? yeah. So for development, I'd say there. Set, uh, design maybe a little bit lower. New Hampshire um, is lower. What? New Hampshire is yeah, lower. New Hampshire. And it also, yeah, that's true. It's geographically based. I mean, if you're in New Hampshire hiring a team in San Francisco, you're going to be paying a premium for that because they're in San Francisco. Um, so, you know, you have to consider all that stuff. I don't like to frown on the idea of hiring people um, who are working from home or, you know, don't have an office. I don't think that the, the statue, uh, the stat, stature, stature of the company is what's important. I don't think that they need to have a high-powered office in a big square somewhere. I don't think they have to be an official studio with 12 people. I think you can get some great results with small-time freelancers who really know what they're doing. And sometimes you can save a lot of money that way. It's awesome. That's it. It's just full of awesomeness. Uh, no, what it does is it, it, the first two chapters is basically teaching you how to use WordPress, how to install it, how to get around the admin, how to create content. From there, it jumps into actual theme development, so how to actually start with a theme. I give you uh, static files to download and convert into a WordPress theme. So I talk about structure and flow and design and development process. As you get towards the end of the book, I, talk, I have an entire chapter designed or dedicated to responsive integrity. And then the last chapter is about how to get involved in the community, how to add and give back. No, I've always been a very busy guy. I, I work a full-time gig, I always have, and nine to five, I'm, I'm that guy. Usually it's more like seven to six, I'm that guy. Um, and I would do freelance at night on the weekends. I'd also teach, I've always taught, I mean, I've taught for six years now. Um, I would just find the time on the weekends at night. I would tell my clients up front, I'm like, if you hire someone else, you're probably going to pay less and you're going to get it done in a third of the time. And for some reason, some of them would still say yes, they want to hire me. I, I would almost fight them off with sticks, tell them to leave me alone. And they wouldn't. So I got lucky. Again, I, I feel like a very lucky human being to be standing in front of all of you. I mean, it's just one of those things where I just kind of feel blessed to be where I am. And that was one of those situations. And I've kind of given up on freelance. I can't support it now. I just can't do it. I can't give back to the client the way I should, so I don't do it anymore. So I focus really, my full-time job is my main thing and then writing on the side. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of it came from teaching. Um, I Probably a third of my clients came from students' parents who had businesses who needed something. And, they were sending their kid to school to learn how to be a web designer, and they kind of realized it's not going to happen in two years. <laughs> and so they're like, all right, let me hire the professor. So the students would ask me to, you know, and that's kind of how a lot of it came from. A lot of it was networking on Twitter and everywhere else. When I go to conferences, when I go to meetups like this, I shake everybody's hands. Like, I go around, I make, I make my rounds, I make sure people know who I am, and it's helped a lot. I mean, I... I mean, last month when I was in Chicago, I was sitting down with Ethan Marcotte and Jeffrey Zeldman. We were having drinks at the, the Westin, just because I happened to be in Chicago at the right time, and I asked them if I could come join them. And I'm sitting there with them and Whitney Hess and uh, Jeffrey Veen, and I'm like looking around the room, like I'm sitting in the same room with all these guys, these guys who literally made the internet what it is today, and I'm doing it just because I happen to network with these guys. I mean, that's really the power of shaking hands. That's why, I, like, people make fun of me, but I can't stand Facebook. I, I can't because I feel like you don't get that personal edge anymore. Twitter, I love because you can actually ask real questions. You know, you're not talking about the type of ice cream you ate the night before. No offense to you, Facebook lovers. I know you all love Facebook. I'm not that guy. Um, I do have a Facebook account. I'm on it. I don't enjoy it a lot. But I say get out there. Meet as many people as you can. Just talk it up. It's really the best way of going about it. I have to cut it short because I need to give you guys more opportunity to buy raffle tickets because I know you're all itching it doing that. And uh, we're going to start the drawing around 8.15, 8.20. So after that, uh, I'll be here and then a few of us might head over to a bar next door and you guys can come and chat me up some more there. Sound good? Sounds good. Thank you all for coming.